I am a born again Christian and today I'm going to answer the web's most searched questions all about Christianity. Number one, do Christians fast? Well the answer is yes we do fast and perhaps as a Christian listening right now thinking yeah but I haven't fasted for a long time so over to you if you are a Christian tell me when was the last time you spent time in prayer and fasting? You see the difference between how a Christian fasts and how other religions fast is we're not trying to do it in any way to sort of win the favour of God, to sort of earn our salvation because we know that is hopeless. The only way to be saved is through Jesus Christ alone. But when we fast what we're doing is we're trying to kill the flesh. We're saying to God, you are more important than this meal in front of me and I want to draw closer to you. Sometimes a Christian will fast if perhaps they're worried or they're nervous about a certain situation in their life. So they'll draw close to God in a time of prayer. And that time which you would spend eating, that time which you would spend, if you like, nourishing your flesh is then given to time spent alone with God. Now, fasting is not a diet and it is so important to make that distinction. The world fasts to make themselves better. Better. But fasting for the Christian is nothing at all to do with you. It's not about the person, it's all about God. Do Christians swear? Well, the sad reality is, yes, I think some Christians do swear. I think it's a sin that some Christians struggle with, but notice I did call it a sin. How can I say that? Well, the Bible says this in Colossians 3 verse 8. It says, But now you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, Malice, blasphemy, that means OMG, to use God's name as a curse word. And it also says, filthy language out of your mouth. Now, does that mean that Christians don't make mistakes? No, there are only two types of people that get into heaven, perfect people and forgiven people. And I think every single Christian would say, I'm not perfect but I'm forgiven because Jesus died for my sins. Do Christians believe in reincarnation? No, we don't believe in reincarnation. We don't believe that you come back as an animal depending on what deeds you've done in this life. So no, the Christian does not believe in reincarnation, but he does believe or she does believe in the resurrection. The Bible teaches us this, that every single person in the world will one day rise again. Whether you've put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ or not, you will one day have a bodily resurrection. Those who reject Jesus Christ will rise, they'll rise, but they'll be cast into judgment for all of eternity. But those who put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ will rise, they will rise with Christ to eternal life. And the question you need to ask yourself is this, are you in Christ? or are you in judgment? And anyone who has not yet come to Jesus, well, I'm gonna tell you how to come to him towards the end of this video. Do Christians believe Jesus is God? Yes, 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 this is so important. And so many people in the world right now are trying to demote Christ. They're trying to take away his deity, his Godhead. He's not just a priest, he's not just a prophet, he's not just a great figure. Jesus Christ is God in a flesh. And that is the message of the Bible, that here is this great big God and he came down to this earth and he took on a human vessel, a human skin, lived among us and died on a cross. So if you ever hear anyone say Jesus isn't God, there is no evidence for this. The Bible is so strong in it. Jesus himself said, I and the Father are one. God the Father is one with Jesus Christ. So make sure you remember this, that true authentic Christianity, which has gone back to all the creeds, the Nicene Creed, the Apostles' Creed, all the doctrines of old, all the men of old, the apostles, taught this, that Jesus Christ is God. Does Christianity have a capital letter? Well, this one made me chuckle a little bit. Yes, Christianity should have a capital letter because Christianity is named after Christ Jesus, who was a person. And just like whatever your name is, say you're John, say you're Mary watching this, you wouldn't like it with a little lowercase m, would you? You want to be a big M, a capital M. And so it is with Christianity, we name it after Christ. And actually the King James Version and the New King James Version take it one step further and they do something, well, let me show you what they do. In the King James Version, instead of just referring to Jesus as he with a lowercase, they often use a capital letter for he and the same for him 
And even the same for when they say me, they always use a higher uppercase letter. And I'll tell you, that's actually a good practice as a Christian. If you're writing about Jesus and you say him or God and you use a capital letter, it sort of reminds you of just who it is you're writing about. It's not bad grammar, it's not bad uh, English if you like. No, it's just saying, wow, this is God. He's different to you and I and he will be with a capital letter. Does Christianity accept other religions? Well, I really want to know what the person means when they ask that. Do they mean, will a Christian accept me if I come to their church and I'm from another religion? Well, a true Christian really would. You would get a warm welcome if you entered into a fellowship, if you were a Muslim, a Sikh, a Hindu. True Christians would wrap their arms around you and say, it's so great you're here today. Let us tell you about Jesus. But does it mean that all roads lead to Rome? Does it mean that everyone can get to heaven by following their own religion and their own faith? Well, the Bible is so clear. Jesus said this, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man can come to the Father except through me. And my friends, the harsh reality is this. There is no name which can be given to men or women by which we can ever be saved except for the name of Jesus Christ. There is no other sacrifice that is acceptable apart from the blood sacrifice where Jesus died on the cross for your sins and my sins. That's the only way to get to heaven is through him alone. Do Christians believe in karma? Well, again, it depends what you mean by that. The Bible actually teaches you reap what you sow. So that idea, what goes around comes around, it's kind of true, you know. If a man sows to the flesh, the Bible says he will reap from the flesh. If you sow out lots of sinful things, well, it will come back to you. The Bible says the way of the sinner is hard. So if you commit lots of sins, you will find that you walk a hard path. You will reap what you sow. But at the same time, it doesn't always work like that. In Psalm 73, we read of a man called Asaph who's looking out at the world and he feels so discouraged because he's asking this question, why is it the wicked, why is it the evil man seems to prosper and do really, really well and have no trouble and perfect health, but yet the righteous man, the good man, suffers and has many problems. And that's the question that sort of runs through the Bible. Why is it the evil seem to get away with things? So it's kind of a balance. So to answer the question, no, we don't believe in karma, but we do have a sort of similar idea that you will reap what you sow. Is Christianity declining? Well, my atheist friends would say, yes, it is. The churches are empty. People don't read the Bible anymore. Many of the kids in our schools would call themselves atheists right now. So Christianity must be declining. And you could look at the West and say, yeah, it's a pretty sorry case. But the truth is this, if you go across the world, you go to China, they believe right now there is 40 million Christians in China. And that's the conservative number. Some even say there are a hundred million Christians in China right now. There is a revival that's happening where the Spirit of God has got a hold of the Chinese people and is saying, Jesus Christ is Lord. And some of them are really being persecuted for it. Right now, as we speak in Iran, there are hundreds of thousands of people who are claiming the name of Christ. But just before you atheists sort of chuckle and think, oh yeah, we're doing so well in England and in America, I just would challenge any atheist who's listening right now. I find this fascinating. You think of the biggest atheist channels on YouTube right now. So you've got Cosmic Skeptic, you've got Genetically Modified Skeptic. Um, who else have we got? Jacqueline Glenn, okay? These guys have got 400,000, maybe 800,000 subscribers at the most. And yet you think of some of the Christian channels like The Bible Project or Lion of Judah and they've got like 2 million subscribers. So it kind of gives you an idea of the proportion of atheists in the world versus the proportion of Christians in the world right now. So don't lose hope. God is still moving and God is still willing to save. But you and I as Christians need to start praying more that he would shake the heavens and bring many more souls into the kingdom. Are Christians allowed to date? Yes, I think Christians are allowed to date. I would just say two words of caution. The first thing is, if you are going to date someone as a Christian, you need to make sure that they are a believer too. As the Bible teaches, we shouldn't be unequally yoked. If you go out with an unbeliever, well, they'll often drag you down. Just like the laws of gravity, it's much easier to pull someone down than to pull someone up. 
so it is in the dating world if you like. And the second caution would be this, you need to make sure you're only dating someone that you really believe this could be your future spouse. I don't think it's good the way the world does things where they go on all these casual different dates with all these different people, Tinder, swipe, swipe, swipe. No, we're looking to protect our hearts, protect our bodies, stay pure. We don't believe in sex outside of marriage. We believe that we want to save ourselves for our future husband or our future wife. Did Christianity originate in Ethiopia? No. Christianity originated in heaven. The Bible says before the foundation of the world, a lamb was slain. And before you and I were created, before the countries were created, God had it in his heart to have a salvation plan for mankind, that Jesus Christ would die on a cross for sinners and he would redeem a people for himself. Did Jesus write the Bible? Well, the answer is yes, he did, and no, he didn't. So how does that work? Well, basically, just like when a man writes a letter, it's not the pen that writes the letter, it's the man who writes it. But the Bible was written by many different authors who were basically like the pens. They were taken up in the spirit and God God himself was the mind behind the letters, he was the mind behind the thoughts and those men were just obedient and wrote down what God told them to write down in the spirit. And that's why the Bible has this wonderful continuity that runs through it because it was different men writing at different times, at different periods of life, from different backgrounds but they all had this same mind, the mind of God, which was pointing to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Now this was actually one of the most popular questions on Google. Did Jesus have siblings. Well, we do actually know that Joseph and Mary had other children, so we believe that Jesus had four half-brothers and at least two half-sisters. Now, this is so interesting because one of those half-brothers was called James, and James wrote the epistle of James. He was an apostle. So if you want to know how one of Jesus' brothers also thought, read the epistle of James. I think it'll blow your mind. What does the Christian fish mean? Well, this is fascinating. Have you ever seen this before on a car? Have you ever seen a fish that looks like this? Well, you know that that's a Christian if you see one of these fishes. You know that that's someone who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ often. Now, why does this fish represent Christianity? Well, in the early days of Christianity, it was so dangerous to say that you were a believer. People would get killed for it. It's not like today where we can do social media posts so we can have big billboards outside our church that say church service at 10.45. No, back then it was dangerous to meet as a Christian. So they would put this little fish sign either in the sand outside a building or on the side of a building so that people would know right here is a place where believers meet. And then other people who were outside of Christianity wouldn't be able to recognise it so the Christians could meet safely and worship their Lord and Saviour. So here's the answer you've all been waiting for. One of the most popular things to be Googled is this. How do you become a Christian? Well, can I start by saying this? I do believe that we as Christians have overcomplicated this. We've restricted it, we've narrowed it, we've put different things inside of God's salvation when God has made it so very easy to understand. And I think it's true when people say that salvation really is as easy as A, B, C. So what does the A stand for? Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to accept you need to accept that you are a sinner. Perhaps in front of me right now is a liar. Perhaps in front of me right now is someone who has used God's name as a swear word, OMG. Perhaps in front of me right now is a person who has had sex outside of marriage, who's aggressive, who's done many wrong things. Well, let me tell you, I'm all of the things that I've just named. I am a sinner and you've got to accept that you are a sinner and there is no good work, there is no righteousness that you can ever do to earn your way into heaven. God's standard is perfection and we can never ever meet that standard on our own. I've, I've said this before, but I want you to imagine that you're a child. Go back to your days of childhood and one day your mother has dressed you in white shoes, white trousers, white top, a white hat, everything you You've got is perfectly white and clean but when you go out and play with your friends you get the tiniest speck of dog muck of dog poo on your shoe 
And you knock on your mum's house and her door is white, her walls are white, her ceiling is white, her carpet is white, everything is white and pristine. And your mum sees that tiny speck of dog muck on your shoe. Is your mother going to let you go into the house? She's not, is she? Because you would ruin it. And so God cannot let us into heaven with just one lie in our account. Because we'd ruin heaven like we've ruined planet Earth. So that's the first thing you need to do, is you need to accept that you're a sinner. But the second thing you need to do is you need to believe. You believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So though we are sinners, the good news is this. Christ Jesus came into the world to die for sinners. The one who never did anything wrong, who had a perfect track record, who had total righteousness accredited to his name. He came into this world and died on a cross. He on the cross took all of our sins in his body and was punished by the Lord God. God poured out all of his wrath, all of his judgment for our sins. And Jesus on the cross was punished there and died. He had a crown of thorns. He had nails through his hands and his feet. He was spat on, he was mocked, he was bruised. And the Bible says it pleased the Lord to crush him. Not because Jesus had done anything wrong, but because our sin is so ugly, it's so disgusting, that God dealt with it on the cross and it pleased him that that sin can be gone and removed. The debt that you and I owe to God can be ripped up, torn in two and gone forever because Jesus Christ died on the cross. So how does that work? Well, you have to confess your sins. Wherever you are, whoever you are right now, cry out to the Lord Jesus Christ and say, have mercy on me, I'm a sinner. You've got to believe that Jesus Christ is the only one who can save you. He's the only one who can rescue you. You can never get to heaven by yourself. It's all about him. And that blood that was shed at Calvary when Jesus bled and died there, the Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness of sins. And it's Jesus' shed blood that washes away your sins. So confess Jesus Christ. And perhaps let's just change the confess into this too. You come, you come to Jesus right now, as you are a sinner knowing you can offer nothing towards your salvation. You just come and say, Lord, save me, forgive me, give me a hope beyond the grave. And God promises any sinner who'll come to him, he'll by no means cast out. He won't push any away, he'll welcome them all in. And then when you do become a Christian, something beautiful happens. The Bible says when we become born again, God's Spirit comes and he lives within us. So suddenly, all those things we used to love, all those sinful things that we used to love, we now suddenly hate. And when we do do them, because Christians do fall into sin, we feel guilty, we feel shameful, we feel disgusted with ourselves. But we know now that we have a new desire and a new heart to please God and to live for him every day. So let me ask you a question. Have you been forgiven? Have you asked Jesus to be your saviour? If the answer is no, I plead with you today. Come to Jesus Christ and know that your debt can be gone, buried at the bottom of the ocean, and you can have your sins forgiven and have peace with God. Okay, I'm being really naughty now, but the last question that has never been Googled by anyone is this. Have you subscribed to Off The Curb Ministries? And if the answer is no, please do subscribe to Off The Curb Ministries. We'd love your friendship here at Off The Curb. And if you'd like to watch another video, kind of similar to this, where I messaged a hundred celebrities about the Lord Jesus Christ, please do click here. And if you'd like to know more about how to become a Christian, I've got a whole bunch of videos talking about Jesus Christ. If you'd like to watch them, please click here. God bless you all and thank you for watching.